Hey, I'm Clara, and I want to tell you about a funny thing my husband's family tried to do. Tyler and I have been together for a long time. We met in college and instantly became best friends. His happy laugh and kind heart made me fall in love with him. We had a great relationship filled with dreams and memories, but Tyler's family had a weird tradition of playing jokes on each other. At first, I thought it was fun, but their jokes were mean and hurtful, not just harmless fun. Instead of making people laugh, they often made them feel embarrassed. I felt uneasy seeing how Tyler's family hurt each other with their unkind jokes. I didn't want to be the target of their mean humor. The first time I met them, they played a really embarrassing prank on me. Tyler's family had picnics every few months where everyone got together. Tyler thought it would be a good time for me to meet them. I was nervous but excited because I really wanted them to like me. At first, everything seemed fun. But then Tyler's dad, Kenneth, pretended to spill his drink on me. It looked like an accident, but it made a mess, so I had to change my clothes. Tyler's mom, Sharon, offered me clothes from their car. But when I opened the bag she gave me instead of regular clothes, there was a big clown costume inside. I couldn't believe it. They planned to embarrass me all along. I felt shocked, hurt, and really embarrassed. I couldn't imagine walking around in a clown costume. How could they do something so mean just for a laugh? I reluctantly put on the big clown costume, feeling really exposed and embarrassed. As I walked back to where the picnic was, Tyler's family started laughing loudly. Their laughter made me feel even worse, especially with other people in the park staring and whispering. It was tough to handle their teasing, especially because I had hoped they would like me. Instead, they seemed to enjoy making fun of me. I felt really sad and angry, wondering why they would want to hurt me like that. It was so embarrassing, and I felt really foolish. I felt a mix of emotions, from shock to embarrassment to anger. Tyler saw how upset I was and got really mad at his family. What were you thinking? How could you do this to Clara? I specifically told you not to play pranks on her until she's comfortable with it. Oh, come on, Tyler, it was just a joke. We didn't mean any harm. This is just how we are. Harm? Look at her, she's embarrassed. I know we're okay with these pranks, but she's not, and you should have respected that. It's the one thing I asked of you. Tyler, relax. It was just a harmless costume. We didn't mean to upset her so much. Just a silly costume? Don't you see how much she's hurting? Mom, you know how much Clara means to me. I won't stand for this. Tyler, we didn't think it would upset her so much. We're sorry. Sorry isn't good enough. You broke your promise. If this happens again, I'm serious, I'll cut ties with both of you. I won't let anyone treat Clara like this. Tyler, please, we didn't mean to hurt her. We'll make sure it never happens again. I hope you mean it. I won't tolerate anyone disrespecting the person I love. I expect better from both of you. After the incident, Tyler apologized to me profusely for his family's actions. It was a big moment for us and showed me that our relationship was more important than their strange jokes. His kindness and understanding really helped me feel better. Sadly, that incident made things difficult with my in-laws. Kenneth and Sharon, my mother and father-in-law, kept making little mean comments about me, calling me names like wasp or party pooper. At first it really hurt, but I learned to ignore them and focus on my relationship with Tyler. A few months later, Tyler proposed to me and we decided to get married. The wedding was amazing and we were both so happy to start our life together. Tyler's parents, Kenneth and Sharon, surprised us with an invitation to dinner at one of my favorite fancy restaurants. They said it was to welcome me into their family. At first, I wasn't sure if I should go. Kenneth noticed I was unsure and texted me an apology for how they treated me before. He promised the dinner was a way to show they accepted me. I reluctantly agreed to go. But I still felt like something wasn't right. I knew them well enough to suspect they had other reasons for inviting me. Luckily, I had a plan. The restaurant they picked was owned by my friend Connor. Connor and I shared a special bond that was more than just friendship. He was like a brother to me, always there when I needed him. We grew up together in the same town and became best friends in high school. Even though we lost touch during college, we reconnected a couple of years ago. Our friendship grew stronger, and I was overjoyed to see him get married. Connor was someone I could always count on. He was kind and caring, making me feel safe and understood. We laughed together, comforted each other, and celebrated together. Connor supported me through thick and thin, offering advice and a listening ear. He became a big part of my life, even making me the godmother to his first child.
He wasn't just a friend, he was like family to me. Hey, Connor, can we talk? Of course, what's on your mind? It's about my in-laws. You remember them, right? Yeah, I met them before. What's going on? Well, they're planning a party for me at your restaurant, but here's the thing. They love playing humiliating pranks on people. The first time I met them, they embarrassed me big time. Really? That's not cool at all. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Thanks. It was awful. But since then, Tyler threatened them, and they haven't tried anything on me again. But I'm worried they might pull something at this party. Don't worry. I've got your back. If they try anything funny, I'll be ready with a backup plan to save you from any embarrassment. Wow. Thanks a bunch. I knew I could rely on you. Having someone support me like this really means a lot. Absolutely. You're like family to us. We won't let anyone make you feel bad. Just believe in me and we'll make sure you have a blast at the party. I'm really grateful for that. You're awesome. Haha, <laughs> make sure to remind my kids that I'm awesome when they're older. Oh, stop it. I need some time to decide. After talking with Connor, I suddenly felt much better. I started to look forward to the party instead of dreading it. Connor's help made me feel more confident, like I had someone on my side. A few days before the party, I called Sharon to make sure everything was set for our reservation at the restaurant. Hi Sharon, I just wanted to chat about the party at the restaurant. I wanted to remind you how important it is to have the reservations right. Don't worry, Clara. I've got it all under control. You don't need to stress about it. I understand you're busy getting ready for the party, but the restaurant has rules we need to follow, and I want to ensure everything goes smoothly. Are you suggesting I can't handle it? I've planned many events before, you know. No, that's not what I meant at all. I just want to prevent any problems and ensure everything goes perfectly. Believe me, Clara, I've sorted out the reservations and everything will be fine. You can trust me. I felt both relieved and a bit worried. Even though Sharon said everything was fine, I couldn't shake off my doubts. I really hoped she had handled the reservations well and that the party would go smoothly. On the day of the party, Hyler and I walked into the restaurant. The receptionist greeted us warmly. We were familiar faces here because we visited Connor's restaurant often. A waiter led us to our table. But when we got there, something seemed wrong. There was a seat missing. Panic rushed through me as I asked about my seat, but Tyler's family burst into laughter instead of answering. Tyler, clearly angry with his family, confronted them. I can't believe you guys. This is totally uncalled for. You're aware of the restaurant's rules? Yet you intentionally pulled that prank. It's not funny when it hurts someone. Oh, come on, Tyler. Don't be so serious. It was just a harmless joke. No, Dad, it wasn't harmless. It's embarrassing and not okay. You promised you wouldn't do anything like this again. Well, maybe now it'll be a real family dinner. I don't see why we have to include someone who can't take a joke in our family. Mom, that's not fair. Clara is my wife, and I won't tolerate anyone disrespecting her. How are you going to make this right? I couldn't believe they were brushing off my feelings so easily, calling it just a joke. It hurt to think they didn't understand how their actions affected me and didn't fully support our relationship. I really wanted them to understand and accept us, but their words just made me feel more hurt and let down. Right when things were getting tense, Connor walked in. Oh, look who's here. Hey, Clara, it's so good to see you. How have you been? Oh my goodness, hi, Connor. It's been a while. I'm doing all right. Thank you. Tyler's family organized a party for me to welcome me into their family. That's fantastic. By the way, everyone, I'm Connor, the owner of this place. Let's kick off this celebration. Wait a minute, though, there seems to be a seat missing at this table. What's going on? Oh, that's their little prank on me. They like playing jokes. I know you're strict about seating, but is there any chance you could make an exception for me? Sorry, Clara, I can't do that. If I made an exception for you, I'd have to do it for everyone. But don't worry, I've got a solution. We have an empty seat in our VIP lounge. How about you and Tyler spend the evening there? You'll have a great view and a comfy spot. Why does she get special treatment? This was meant to be a joke. There's no need for all this fuss. Well, it's important to ensure our guests feel welcome and valued, and I believe it's crucial to respect everyone's feelings. Anyway, Clara, your meal and all your drinks tonight are on the house. Enjoy your evening. Thank you so much, Connor. In that moment, my appreciation for Connor was boundless. Having him there brought a sense of peace and security. 
He led us to the VIP area, shielding us from the chaos caused by Tyler's family. They protested loudly, but Connor made sure we received special treatment. He simply signaled to one of the wait staff to take care of their table, and they quieted down immediately. I thanked Connor profusely for standing up for me and preventing me from feeling even more embarrassed. Tyler's support meant the world to me. His actions truly revealed his character and his commitment to keeping me safe. Despite his family's teasing, he stood by me, prioritizing our well-being above all else. It demonstrated the depth of his love and the strength of our bond. Sitting in the VIP area surrounded by security and support, I felt immensely grateful for both Connor and Tyler. Their unwavering presence reassured me that I wasn't facing this journey alone. As Tyler and I ordered our meal and drinks, we started to relax and enjoy the evening. However, the night had more surprises in store for us. Hey guys, where would you like us to sit? We're all here for Clara's party, right? I don't think that's a good idea. We're good on our own. Well, what if we apologize? We're family and family shouldn't treat each other like this. Yeah, we want to make things right. Can't we all just move on from this? Are you serious? You didn't want her in the family before, and now suddenly you do. Or is it because you want to sit in a fancier place and get a free meal? You guys are a joke. Leave us alone. Tyler, we're really sorry. We didn't mean it like that. We were just messing around. Messing around? It didn't feel like a joke when you embarrassed me. Your actions spoke louder than words. Enough. We don't want to hear it. Just go. Tyler, please no. Mom, it's time you both understand the consequences of your actions. Leave now. Connor, sensing the tension, stepped in and politely asked Kenneth and Sharon to leave our table. When they refused, he warned them of involving the authorities. Finally, they begrudgingly walked back to their table. However, Connor followed them and requested them to leave his restaurant, citing complaints from other customers about their disruptive behavior. With no other choice, they left their heads hung low in embarrassment as everyone in the restaurant witnessed their humiliating departure. That night, Tyler and I had a wonderful time. We laughed, ate, and enjoyed drinks with Connor, celebrating our victory over Tyler's family's failed prank. After that night, Tyler's family bombarded us with angry texts, blaming us for overreacting and causing a scene. Their words hurt, worsening the strain between us. It felt like the aftermath of a storm, with no calm in sight. Instead of engaging with their negativity, we decided to take a stand. We realized we didn't need their toxicity in our lives, so we blocked them, putting an end to their hurtful words and actions. Cutting ties with Tyler's family was necessary for our emotional well-being. We refused to subject ourselves to their constant ridicule and cruelty. It was a freeing choice that allowed us to focus on our love and supportive relationships. Life went on, and Tyler and I flourished in our love and unity. Our bond grew stronger, and we created our own loving family free from his parents' toxicity. Thanks for sticking with me through this roller coaster story. Remember, the sweetest victories often come from unexpected allies. Don't let anyone's cruel pranks dampen your spirit. Stay true to yourself, and you'll always come out on top.